I would like to try and um, summarize up, although that's not going to be so easy to do. But I want to try to explain why it is really difficult to make the leap from a duality to oneness for a Christian because there is so much psychological belief to unpack that creates the narrative, creates the experience, and creates the reality. I was, um, I was uh, briefly exchanging with another Facebook person yesterday um, who was insisting on... Um, wanting to know nothing but Christ Jesus and him crucified. Um, he wanted to know nothing but to know this other person, this Savior that we know as Jesus Christ. And the focus was totally on that. That was this person's spiritual goal to know Christ Jesus and he could not comprehend that this Christ was he himself so I want to try and walk you through the reason of why this is so difficult because as a Christian, especially as a Christian uh, and the Bible, we become indoctrinated and conditioned to a separation narrative, which basically says, or I should call it duality narrative, which basically is the knowledge of good and evil, or good and bad, or holy and profane. And as Christians, we become deeply indoctrinated in a very distinct separation, psychologically and mentally, that you are a separate profane sinner that has, not, has got nothing in common with a holy God. Then this mindset and this awareness, I'd rather call it non-awareness, um, is then compounded by the story that God sent his innocent son to die for your profaneness, your profanity, your sinfulness, further cementing the gap the chasm between you and God. Christianity teaches that that is supposed to bring us together with God. And our mind, our intellect will believe that, but psychologically, at a deep, deep level within us, we feel even more separated from holiness, from wholeness. Because, think about it. 
the trauma that is enmeshed in the story that an innocent man had to brutally die for you to be okay with God. There is a psychological aspect that that widens the gap. And so, as Christians, we read and interpret and become conditioned into this story of duality, of separateness. And this trauma, religious trauma, is deep in our cells in, at a cellular level that our mind, our ego mind, our intellectual mind, our mental mind is completely unaware of. So you believe you are one with God with your mental mind. You believe you can achieve oneness with God by loving Jesus and knowing Jesus. But wherever you have, um, wherever you have two entities, two parties, as in, I want to know you, you are going to be um, in the awareness of duality. Duality is two, right? Oneness is only one. It's a consciousness of being that one. But in duality, you're always seeking for this other one. You're seeking for this other. You're not one with this other. And it's just the way things work in our psychology, in our psyche. And therefore, because of this trauma, because of this deep, deep gap of separation, Christians have a hard time letting go of Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Because he, he has been sold to us as the ticket to heaven as the ticket to be reconciled to the Father. And so it's unreasonable to tell them or insinuate that you have to let go of Jesus. From a cellular level, everything inside of them screams, No! I need to be in relationship with Jesus in order to be in good standing with God. This is subconscious, guys. This is so subconscious. It's in your cellular memory. And until such a person does what is called the shadow work or the inner work or the great work and deconstructs the conditioning at a cellular level, which means you have to get rid of the belief in separation in the first place. You have to get rid of this idea that God separated himself from you or you separated yourself from God. That is an idea of the mind. And we were told this over and over and over. And so we believed it. You have to get rid of the separation narrative. Basically, you have to accept the fact that the Bible has got it wrong in a lot of places and in a lot of cases. You have to let go of the Bible as your authoritative word of God. When you do that, when you find the courage to do that, Once you find the courage, as I call it, to rebel against the narrative that we have been given over millennia, and you start to tap into your soul, start 
feeling into what's going on down there. Start rebelling against these faulty beliefs. Then you can slowly make your way toward union consciousness, oneness consciousness, which says, I was never separated from God. I was never a sinner. I was never unholy. From the beginning, I was the very thing that God is, holy. You have to rewrite the program. And uh, once you do that, once you real eyes, you real eyes, you realize that you are every bit the same that God is then you have the realization that Jesus had, I and the Father are one. And if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen me, you have, to, you have seen the source God, the source energy. That is when you can say that I and the Father are one, which technically means I and the Father are the same, or I am the Father then you have achieved oneness consciousness. In oneness consciousness, there is no room for the biblical Christian narrative. So, I don't know if this is any clearer. Um, and yes, this person says uh, they have an experience with Jesus every day. They talk to Jesus on their inside and and. Jesus talks back to them. <sighs> I don't want to totally negate the experience, but your mind, your psyche is so powerful that it will turn a story into a real experience. So yes, you're going to see Jesus. So yes, you are going to experience Jesus. Yes, he's going to come and talk to you. Our mind is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. And it creates everything. It even creates the Jesus reality. Consciousness is a creative force. And your mind is using the consciousness that was embedded in it. And by embedded, I mean the Jesus story. And therefore... Your conscious mind is going to create a very real Jesus experience. And what you think is Jesus talking to you is actually a higher dimension of your higher conscious self. So basically you're having a conversation with yourself, but your mind has projected it to be another person because the mind only knows duality, so it has to be another person. And then that, uh, that other person, the mind identifies as Jesus. Does this make sense? I don't want to scare you, but it's, there's really nothing scary about it. If this makes you afraid, it's because of the cellular memory of duality in your system, in your psyche. So that needs to be unraveled before you can come into the self-realization and the God-realization that I and the Father are one and the same. So this is just trying to put years and years of deconstruction into a little nutshell video. And I hope that this helps. And I just want to finish off by saying when you experience Jesus it's a very real experience but it's an experience through the awareness of duality. For oneness you will eventually even lose Jesus because you realize that you are that one consciousness. You are that. 
I am that I am. Does that sound familiar? You are that. 